All right, guys, welcome back with us. We have the shoe queen, Juliana Hager. She's with us here in the Out the Closet podcast. And we've been talking about a lot of fun stuff. She's coming to us live right now from her gorgeous custom built shoe closet. So if you log on to the podcast, you can see that at outthecloset.podcast.com. Juliana, thank you for coming on the show. And we were just talking about the future, the, the previous segments. We were talking about first, how to repair your shoes. Last, we were talking about Gaga and Hugh Jackman and how well they look in their shoes. All right. Now it is Pride Month. Okay. We are literally on the hills of June. June is Pride Month next month. There's going to be a ton of different things going on. And I know as a gay man, I go into stores this time of year and I see pride everywhere. And on one hand, I'm excited because we have representation everywhere. On the other hand, I'm thinking, how many of these businesses are just here for the profit? So you have done some homework and you're here to tell us today about some pride shoes that we can buy with confidence and feel comfortable about buying. So tell us about all your research you did on pride and the pride shoes and all the pride fun stuff that is uh, out in the stores right now or, or next month. And as you mentioned, Andrew, the, the sad thing is, is that uh, a lot of companies are riding the rainbow slide to the pot of gold without giving back. And that's just wrong. That's just wrong. And so little, lepre- lip- little leprechauns over there. Yes, <laughs> just they are lecherous leprechauns. And we don't like that. We, we really uh, we want um, the diversity, the equality to all be highlighted. But what an amazing thing to also give back to charities and causes that benefit and support everyone and the equality in the community and LBGTQ, everyone. So yeah. we want that to be all, all the very- letters. <laughs> yeah, all the letters. I personally bought uh, a really cute little clutch myself. Yes. Actually, uh, uh, the shoe queen made a special visit out to where I live now in Santa Monica, California. And uh, the shoe queen came with a whole bag full of shoes uh, and they were all amazing. But probably my favorite thing of everything you brought was this cute little clutch, which you're showing off right now on the vodcast out of the closet podcast.com. But anyway, it is a um, it's like a gold champagne sequin or maybe even beaded. It looks like hand beaded. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Beautiful champagne kind of beads. And then it has this vibrant, bold uh, rainbow right in the middle. And that's gorgeous. Where is that from? That's actually from Etsy. Oh. Uh, so, you know, this was a person that is an entrepreneur, so I don't mind that as much. They're, you know, making their own way in this world as an entrepreneur. And um, so to me, that that has a, a benefit there. I agree uh, with that, too. I think sometimes, you know, individuals, you're not going to know whether they're giving back. But if, if it's going to them and they're doing some pride worthy, you know, items, it's worth, you know, putting your money where that is. But when we're talking about bigger corporations, bigger retailers, sure. Who is it that is doing the best, doing the most good? Really, they're doing the most good. Um, I'd have to say uh, I looked at everything. Um, All of the manufacturers are coming out with pride shoes and pride sneakers specifically. Um, And that's Reeboks, Adidas, Vans, Puma, um, you know, but really the best was Converse. And what I found with Converse, they were coming out of the closet with a gorgeous collection for 2021 pride and it is just beautiful and colorful and all inclusive and they benefit five different charities one that we've all Whoa. heard about it it gets better project um mm-hmm. so that one that right off the bat that's just perfect then alley forney center uh, then bagley and out metro west are just a few of the charities that that collection benefits and that was so easy to discover and to find um as i went to all the other manufacturers it doesn't say anything about giving back um except for tiva tiva had a really good um and this was for men and women and everyone a very inclusive it's a called a platform instead of a platform it's a platform sandal that you could wear to festivals to the pride parades oh. and, gathering. Um, and it rainbow on the platform on the basic base of the shoe and it's about a five inch platform uh with rainbow and then had either the black or the white straps to the tiva um you'd want to have a pedicure 
um, if possible. You know, we've all had our feet yeah. You can get, but you could you could get a little Roy G. Biv uh, pedicure. You sure could. That would be <laughs> awesome. I might have to do that. And then uh, that Tiva for that they are donating to the Human Rights Campaign Foundation. Um, nice. Another amazing worthy cause so that to me spoke volumes uh both converse and tiva and i'm proud to say that i own a pair of converses i was gonna show that if i could here yeah now, oh my this- gosh <laughs> okay juliana is holding up this cute okay she wears a size six heel so that's pretty small you know a drag queen is gonna be like in a 13 14 so she's half the size of a drag queen and <laughs> this converse she's holding up is it glitter it is. Um, it's kind of a denim with a little uh, silver sequiny sparkle to it. Yes. Yeah, oh, too. that is cute. And I've noticed something's different about this one. When so I'm looking at it. inside of this converse is an actual platform. So it's a high heel converse. Chuck Taylor. OK, guys, uh, I'm, what I'm looking at right now, it literally looks like the regular Chuck Taylor that's flat that Juliana is holding up. But you can kind of see through the fabric where there's a heel built in. So even though it looks flat from the side in the actual shoe, your, your heel is lifted maybe three inches or so. Uh, right? oh, yeah. Three and a half, almost four inches in these. Oh my gosh. Almost. Oh, hey, four inches, nothing to, uh, you know, <laughs> snap at. <laughs> yeah, that'll work. All right. So those are beautiful and they give you height. Now those aren't rainbow, but they, they probably have those same, that, that same size. And the rainbow I could not find uh, this, Uh-oh. this, Version in rainbow with the heel. Okay. But I'm not through right. looking. So no worries on that. <laughs> or shopping. So hey, I'm and I was going to tell you and what's cool about Converse and, and a lot of these companies. I mean, first of all, you should do your own research. You know, if you're, if you really like a pair of shoes um, and you want to make sure it gives back, then do your research and, and find that out. Um, but Converse, it seems like every year they, they do a little bit more and more and they give back more and more. And they always change the designs of their shoes. So it does seem like sometimes you can get. The canvas that might have the rainbow print. Sometimes it's just on the bottom mm-hmm. of the sole. Um, mm-hmm. So it seems like they have different styles and, and those things. And uh, artists are creating those. That's another really cool thing about it. Like there are artists out there creating those designs um, and all with self-love in mind. So that to me is just beautiful. And Converse to me was won on that prize as far as the pride. Uh, they're getting that crown as far yeah. as getting back and being uh all inclusive and embracing and promoting self-love so and and you know you have to love yourselves the way that you are and uh you know i i know i preach it but uh self-love is what you have to have i think it's awesome and you know and i know obviously pride is just around the corner but um us gays love to show our pride all year round so these are shoes you could wear all year round they don't have to just be pride sometimes when i have a pride shirt I find that I kind of just wear it around pride events. <laughs> I don't wear it nearly nearly as much out just because, you know, it's a it's a lot of pattern, a lot of bold. But um, the fact that you can get some of these shoes that have, you know, it's some of the shoes can be outlandishly rainbow, like mean, rainbow everywhere. And then some of them will just have like a hint of it, like a small little nod, which I think is cool, too. You know, so you could you could even dress it up a little bit if you wanted to. Yeah. Um, so that's pretty amazing. So uh, what is like when you when you go out looking for shoes, whether it's pride or not, what are like the what are the three things that you look for most as a shoe queen? Well, as we know, I like height. I like to have a heel, even in my tennis shoes, my sneakers. Yeah. Um, so that's one thing. I like to have a heel. Uh, I do wear flats uh, from time to time. I'm not really super comfortable in them, uh, but I will wear them, but I look for the heel. I look for, obviously I like shoes with character. I like, uh, leopard prints, bejeweled prints. Um, I seem to dress in monochromatic. So then I like a, a splash of color, a print or something for my shoe and my accessories. So, um, that to me, uh, that's why I love the rainbow look to it too. It's so much fun and so colorful. And then it has such a nice, wonderful, all inclusive meaning. So that's why when I bought this purse and I brought it out to LA and we went to actually, uh, a drag queen brunch. Oh yeah. I, I didn't think I was going to make it home with this. I oh no, the drag was- queens were the drag queens were eyeing that up for sure. We were at Hamburgers, uh, Hamburger Marys in WeHo, which if you've never been to a Hamburger Marys, you should and you should go support your local drag show. So we went out to Hamburger Marys and uh, yeah, you know how the, you know I feel like uh, drag queens have the ability to put on a show and then what I call 
shark eye, um, a dollar bill from like a mile away. You, or they'll be in the middle of a song and you'll see their eye dart to the left and they see that dollar from way away, far away. But they were doing that to this rainbow purse the entire time. And I was like, hold on to that with your dear life, Jules. <laughs> <laughs> the queens are going to get it. <laughs> on the table so we could keep an eye on it <laughs> yeah we chained it to the table <laughs> she's like trying to grab it <laughs> um well i had such a good time while you were here in santa monica we definitely had a big gay time uh yes, going out did. and about and i loved it because every time i looked down at your feet you were uh adorned in a different pair of shoes and i was really amazed because uh you you bought you brought a bag specifically just for your shoes on this trip um, but can you tell us and the people at home, like, how do you pack? I mean, not everybody can bring um, all their shoes on a trip. So what is the best way to like, what is the best way to pack the shoes to make sure that they make it to and from safely and uh, without getting scuffed up too much? Sure. And I'll tell you, Southwest Airlines was fantastic. They were really, I had, I brought two bags on. Uh, everyone was in a great mood because people are starting to travel again. So it was very exciting. I, you know, I want to give them a shout out. Um, and then I will tell you, they, they were stunned when I opened up that bag of just shoes. And I did explain to them that I was visiting my besties, um, two beautiful human beings that are married and are just, just the love of my life. And they dress beautifully. And so I have to up my game. I had to bring all these shoes and clothes. It was ridiculous. But I will tell you to pack your shoes, really the best way to do it. Um, if you have, some plastic or uh, even grocery bags. Like um, you could use those, reuse those, wrap your shoes in them, mm -hmm. and place them at the bottom of your suitcase and then your clothing on top of them. That is really the best way to do that. And it keeps it a little bit organized also. I try to stay organized by bringing a separate shoe bag. So that's, and I, I <laughs> that's a good way to do it. Yeah. And I do put my other accessories in there as well, but, um, yeah, I, I usually roll up the socks, you know, the underwear and that kind of thing and kind of stick it in a shoe. Cause I figure that'll help keep it shape. And, you know, it's not like it's, it's going to wrinkle my socks. That's a great idea. And, and rolling, you can get more in your suitcase when you roll your things too. It's true. It's very true. So, well, so I have one more yeah. question, um, before we go today, first of all, you've been amazing. This has been a lot of fun. And I yes, honestly, I wish you could just come for the whole show because we got a lot of stuff to talk about. In fact, coming up, uh, in a segment, um, right after yours, we're going to talk about getting back into the workforce. Okay. A lot of people are on unemployment and they're getting, you know, they're either being forced <laughs> by their state to get back into the thing or by their mm -hmm. partners or whatever it may be, but they have to work, they have to get a job. And so, um, you know, putting your best foot forward uh, on an interview, what what would be some things that you'd recommend going into an interview? Obviously, uh, I would say the total look, but also the shoes. Is there anything that the shoes can tell an employer about an applicant? Yes. And that is a great question. So uh, definitely an employer will look at you from head to toe. And they're going to, if you take good care of your shoes and they're polished and they're not scuffed, they're going to take a note of that. And that's going to mean something to them. That's going to mean a lot to them. So I definitely recommend that you have your shoes. If you need to take the, your favorite pair and your good luck pair to take them to the cobbler, have them shined up, have them fixed up, have them just perfect. Um, and also, I mean, I totally believe in good luck shoes. I mean, wear those, the ones you feel the most confident in. Um, yeah. And if you're interviewing for a creative job, wear a really fun pair where, you know, that sort of thing. So don't be afraid to show the creativity uh, in a unusual pair of shoes. Yeah, um, I think you definitely, I think you definitely have to use your best judgment because I mean, I mean, if you're showing up to a job interview and you're in some ratty tennis, sh tennis shoes or sneakers, um, that might look bad on you. But if it's a, if you're going to something that might be a creative or maybe a, a mm -hmm. more youthful work environment or something that's maybe slightly more casual, you can still get a pair of sneakers and make it look you know, some dressy. bunch of, yeah, but they better, fun. but they better have clean laces look, yes. you know, polished up and, and look like you're ready to go to work. That's right. Absolutely. Right. And I will tell you, I personally, um, know your audience, as you mentioned, know your audience. So if you're interviewing, let's say in the banking industry or with a law firm, wear a more conservative shoe. Don't wear necessarily the bright red stiletto or the rhinestones, you know, uh, choose wisely and know your audience. 
So yeah, you also don't want them so focused on your shoes that they don't listen to anything you're saying, <laughs> or that you are. I mean, sometimes right. I would pair of shoes that I just stare at them like a lot and real so, quick moving up from the table because you know like obviously the shoes are going to be a part of it when we introduce somebody but if you're usually in an interview you're sitting across from somebody at a desk so they're seeing from let's say nipple height up you know your your bust up what are some accessories you would recommend and maybe not recommend for a job interview I definitely recommend necklaces um, that some detailing I don't happen to have one on today because I wore these enormous floral earrings now yeah, these those gorgeous earrings thank you i would not wear these to an interview um I okay would why is that because they really have kind of a going out feel like going out on the town at night kind of feel to them so i, I would definitely recommend a necklace um a little down plate on the earrings um and then you know or a scarf you could even do a scarf um for men if if it you feel comfortable wearing a tie um wear a tie i mean and, and bow ties are fantastic i mean they really are and they show personality so um either kind of tie is perfect either the traditional or the bow tie for men what is it dress for the job you want not for the job you have so if you're unemployed don't dress unemployed <laughs> Go the job you want. all right so it's like anything else just i mean and if you were going to a creative um place you know those those fabulous earrings you're wearing right now might be perfect. So you it's know your audience. Oh yeah. And those shoes. Oh my God, those shoes. At the very least, they're going to think you're three to four inches taller. <laughs> and height. I love to be taller. So yes. yeah. But I mean, hopefully you're working for an equal opportunity employer that doesn't take your height. Into consideration. Uh, Unless you're basketball. Not, yeah. That question is not really, how tall are you? Yeah. So <laughs> well, I've had an amazing time with you. Juliana, uh, the shoe queen. Uh, anytime she graces us with her presence, we are luckier for it. So thank you so much for coming on the Out of the Closet podcast for thank the second time. <laughs> yes, thank you so much. Thank you much, so much to the Karen Walker, to my Just Jack. All right, the world-renowned shoe expert, Juliana Hager, the shoe queen. That's right. Hey, if you guys have any questions you want to ask the shoe queen directly, it's really easy to do. She has her own email address with us so that's shoe queen at out of the closet podcast.com that's shoe queen at out of the closet podcast.com if you want to email juliana you can email her there you can ask her all your shoe accessory and fashion questions and she'll answer them the next time she's going to be on next month for the shoe queen so thank you so much juliana thank you, you thank you remember to love yourselves love, love yourselves. yourselves and wear some fabulous shoes Thank you so much. Have a great week and I'll talk to you next time. Woo! <laughs>
than misspelling information on your resume, especially if it's your name, which by the way, I have actually, I've actually done. I submitted about six resumes once and then realized uh, I misspelled my own name. So that's, that's embarrassing. Anyway, it happens to everybody. So I just say double check all your work just so that doesn't happen to you. Um, and update your work history and referrals. Make sure uh, that the referrals you're listing know that you're listing them and to expect a call. Also, don't list a referral that's not going to give you a great job recommendation. If you've been fired from a job, don't list them. It's probably not a good idea. Also, don't be afraid to let your personality shine through your resume, okay? Don't worry about just keeping it formatted to a basic, boring format. If there's something that helps your resume stand out, do it, okay? And if you have the ability to create a website or the know-how with your information, I know that seems like a lot of extra uh, steps, but if you can put together a website with more detailed information on, your, on, on the page, then you don't have to put as much on your printed resume. So, um, and this is gonna be a huge tip, okay? If you are submitting any applications electronically, okay? You're applying online. Let me tell you a little trick that you're gonna need to do, okay? So once you have your resume completed, everything's been double checked, it looks beautiful. What I want you to do is I want you to go and copy verbatim the entire job description, all the qualifications, all that kind of stuff. Copy all of that information. And if you can put it in your resume, as either a hidden layer of text, you can put it in the background as all white text so it doesn't print. Anyway, the main goal with this is you want that information to be there in the background, kind of hidden. So if your application is being filtered electronically through software, it'll read those keywords that it's looking for and put your resume on the top of the list, okay, for the interview interviewers. So there's a lot of times where people won't even see your resume because it doesn't have those keywords. So make sure you hide those keywords in your resume. I'll put more on the out of the closet podcast.com website on how you can do these steps, how it's um, relatively easy to do. And it could put you at the top of the list. Like I said, all right, personally, I always recommend a cover letter as well. I know it seems like a hassle, but it'll help you stand out and it shows you put in just a little bit more effort than most. And don't be too wordy though on that. I mean, if it, you just want to be concise, and say what you're what you want, what you're excited about the job. Basically, show that you've catered and and customized the document for them. All right. And if you, I'm just saying, if you create a form letter, something that you're going to use over and over again for different cover letters, that's fine. It'll save you some time. But I can't stress enough: you must double check that before you send them because if you, for whatever reason, forget to switch out a business name and you send it to a competitor or something like that, you're definitely not going to get an interview. That's for sure. All right, now before you even push submit to send in your application online, there are a few things you should do, okay? You should first research the business, research the, the location, its information. It's imperative you know what you're getting into, what you're going into. What is their culture like there? Are they fun, friendly? Are they like a Google campus or is it really quiet, like a library? Um, are they active on social media? Are they active? Do you see them on Facebook and Instagram? Um, is their website really up to date? Do they look like their principles match up with yours? That's important. Do they offer benefits? Um, who are their competitors? That's important to know as well. And it's always good to brush up on any recent events, promotions, sales, news information that they may have. If you want to sign up for their newsletter, that'd be great too. Okay, you want to be as well informed on the business as possible. If you are lucky enough to get called in for an interview or scheduled for a Zoom call interview, the rules are pretty much the same, okay? even when it comes to wearing pants, just do it. Okay. I promise because that'll be the one time they ask you to stand up and you're going to be there in a speedo. All right. Which I guess could land you certain jobs, but anyway, just come prepared, whether it's on zoom or whether it's in person. Okay. And then rehearse that shit. All right. Seriously. If you have someone to do a mock interview with, do it. Okay. If you don't, um, then I would just assume the questions that will typically be asked and have a response ready to go. Have it ready under your belt. You can prepare yourself because you know they're gonna ask a lot of the same questions. And I would say when they ask, the, the typical question that gets asked is, um, when was a time in a previous job where uh, you rose to the occasion and provided a solution or what is something along those lines, okay? So when that question is asked, I want you to think about the STAR method, okay? The STAR method is an acronym, STAR, meaning situation, task, action, and result, STAR. Situation is what is the context of your story? So basically, what is the problem that was presented to you as an employee in the, in the past job? The next is going to be T for task. Task, what was your role in the situation? Okay, so 
what was the situation? And then how did you play a part in it? The next will be action. Okay, what did you do? So what did you do uh, in that role to uh, get you a result? And then the last one is result, R. Okay, what did your actions lead to? So basically you're saying, here was a problem. Uh, here was my role in the, in the problem. Here's the actions I took and here's the result. It's so easy. So just think of that star method uh, when you're interviewing. Uh, and again, you can, you can pre-rehearse that ahead of time so that way it feels a little bit more comfortable. It feels like it's in your back pocket. Have your references in order for the interview and bring examples of your own work, especially if you're doing any kind of portfolio stuff. Make sure you have that with you. Um, and always bring an extra copy of your resume. It's important. I don't care whether you emailed it in, uh, you think they're going to print it off, bring an extra copy because it'll be that one time you show up and nobody has a paper in front of them. That's no good. Just plan ahead. And when I say plan ahead, I mean it. Literally lay out your interview clothes the night before, pre-print all of your materials. Um, no matter if you have to waste time sitting in the parking lot too at the place you're going to interview, plan for traffic and get there at least 15 minutes early. So what? Listen to a podcast until your interview time's ready to go like the out of the closet podcast just make sure you get there early so they know you can be on time and you make a great first impression and make sure you bring copies of all your information but also be prepared with a notepad or a notebook to take some notes um i also make sure you have a pen that actually works um and uh any of the other printed materials that you need and this is so important to bring your own question that's right all right have questions or hers for the interviewer um, you know, a lot of times they'll ask you, do you have any questions for me? Don't let that time pass. Don't just say no and end the meeting. It's another time for you to stand out. And some of the questions you could consider asking, you don't have to ask all these, but you can consider asking any one of these. Um, for instance, can you explain some of the day-to-day -day responsibilities this job entails? Okay. If you ask an interviewer that they're going to tell you exactly what to expect. Okay. Um, it also makes you look like you care that much more about what you're going to be doing if you get the job. Um, another question you could ask is, how would you describe the characteristics of someone who would succeed in this role? You're basically saying, give me the map to success here, okay? So this is a great question. It'll also help prepare you in this role and probably uh, any other role. And then you could ask, if you were in this position, uh, and you will be in this position if you do all these steps, um, you'll ask, how would my performance be measured and how often would it be measured? All right, and to show teamwork and uh, that you get along with other people, um, what you might ask is something like, what departments does this team work with regularly? Or how do these departments typically collaborate? Uh, and what does that process look like? It kind of gives you an insight into their business and it shows again, that you're interested. Um, and what are the challenges you are currently facing in your role? I know it seems a little crazy to ask an interviewer that question, but a lot of times the interviewer will be your direct boss. And so their challenges are going to be your challenges. Um, so it's important to have that. And it also, uh, let's the interviewer talk about themselves a little bit, which takes the load off you a little bit. All right, these are just some quick things to remember. First of all, make a great impression. Come dress for the job you want. You know, make sure you have your hair quaffed, everything looks in place. Make sure you look presentable. Make sure you're polite. Treat every single person you interact with with respect. Okay, this is um, some insight. I used to be a hiring manager at a radio station, and actually, I wasn't the first part of the interview, the receptionist was. And our interviews did not know that. I would ask the receptionist to ask a couple of questions on my behalf. So before the interviewee even got back to me, the interviewer, I already had a good idea of were they nice? Were they polite? Were they on time? Uh, did they follow direction? All of that before you've even walked in the room. So it's important that you treat everyone with respect because you never know who's talking to who. Just make sure you practice good manners, good body language. Win them over with your authenticity and your positivity. I can't stress that enough. The more authentic you are, just like in life, the better it's going to play out for you. And the more positive you are, the better. It's not a good time to bring up negative things in an in, uh, interview. It's always good to keep it positive. Uh, but it is important to respond truthfully to all the questions you're asked because you don't want to say, yeah, I know how to build a nuclear weapon or something <laughs> if you don't know how to do it. So make sure you just truthfully answer the uh, questions that are asked and you know tie your answers back to your skills and accomplishments okay so when you're answering something say you know i was able to do that because i i'm skilled in this you know or whatever it is make sure your answers are concise and focused um and i would just say keep negativity out of everything okay so don't talk about previous employers or bad bosses or horrible peers don't talk about any of that okay 
Um, but before you leave, I would always say, um, be a little uh, presumptuous. Say, um, what are the next steps? You know, because you want to imply that you're ready to take this job on, you're ready to get started immediately. What are the next steps? I don't think it's a problem to ask that. Uh, be a little forward in that. And then I think, and uh, this seems a little old school, but I think sending a personalized thank you letter or follow up is important. Now, I'm not saying like break out a quill and some ink and make some parchment. I'm not saying you're going to go to that kind of trouble. I mean, you could still mail in a thank you letter, but even an email to uh, the interviewer just saying, hey, thank you for your time. I had a great, um, you know, had a great interview with you. I hope you have any follow-up questions, give me a call. Here's my cell phone. Here's a way to get in co contact with me. That is just general nice practice, but also um, it'll help you stand out in the long run because that person will be like, okay, that person at least thought to write a thank you note. So no matter what you do, I know you're going to be successful if you just follow these little steps. Okay. So no matter where you go, good luck in your job search. Okay. Don't procrastinate and go out there and get the job of your big gay dreams. Yes. Woo. Hello to all my Out of the Closet podcast family. I don't want to beg and I don't want to come off as needy, but the Out of the Closet podcast only exists because of listeners like you, and I really need your support. Any financial support you can do would be amazing and greatly appreciated, whether it's $5, an ongoing monthly contribution, or if you just want to hand over your total inheritance and put me in the will, that's fine too. Anyway, it's really easy to do. Just go to outofthecloset.podcast.com and click the support tab. Thank you so much for supporting the Out of the Closet podcast. <laughs>